Hi folks, my name is Dr. Ty Robbins and I wanted to provide you with a quick overview of our course EVSP 502. Now, while I may not be your instructor this semester, I've taught this course many times and actually as an environmental economist, I can attest to the relevancy and importance of policies and regulations to modify consumer, firm, and national behavior in creating a more sustainable world. In this video, I hope to share the big picture of the course and get you excited for the weeks ahead. Now at the foundational level, environmental economics aims to solve a complex problem, and that's the problem of inefficiency. Environmental goods are often rivalrous in nature, inducing consumers and firms to exploit resources before their competitors can. In addition, citizen consumption and firm production often create negative externalities that increase societal costs and or harm innocent third parties. Importantly, these issues impact both current and future generations. Now we'll explore some complex topics in 502. One of the most critical tasks in protecting the environment is attempting to estimate the demand and valuation for environmental goods. These goods are notoriously difficult to measure the demand for since they are typically non-market goods, meaning we are unable to observe transactional data for prices and quantities that people consume. Being able to estimate the valuation for environmental goods allows us to use cost benefit analysis to decide between policy alternatives. In an effort to improve competitive market outcomes, we'll also identify market-based incentive mechanisms like emission fees and tradable permits that modify behavior towards the social optimum. Beyond theoretical models, we'll explore real-world applications and discuss the effectiveness of environmental policies. Above all, our goal is to find an efficient but healthy balance between economic interests and environmental sustainability. Now on the left, you'll see an array of learning outcomes you'll focus on in this course. While I won't read each in detail, it's helpful to point out the main takeaways and connections. Overall, you'll notice an emphasis on understanding the underlying issues that generate environmental problems. After defining the root causes of market failure, we'll focus on equal attention on developing economic models to solve these problems and also investigate actual outcomes in the field. While fancy economic models are great, it's critical to evaluate one, their ability to model the real world, and two, opportunities to reduce economic and environmental inefficiencies. So it's great to develop potential solutions, but then it's equally important to evaluate empirical evidence on the effectiveness of these policies, both in the US and abroad. In its application to the field and future job opportunities, this class helps us identify the strengths and weaknesses of environmental regulation, their applications, and how to use these policies to advise both the private and the public sector. Having a strong understanding of environmental economics allows us to find balance between economic growth and environmental sustainability. Now, there are no formal prerequisites for the course, aside from a willingness to learn and the patience and growing excitement to explore how economic concepts can be used to improve and sustain the environment. At times, economic growth is the priority of consumers, firms, and governments. But with appropriate incentives and regulations, we nudge all parties towards the pro-social and pro-environmental objectives. In sum, I hope this overview gave you a little flavor of what you'll cover in this course. While 502 may at times be complex and demanding, it's the very foundation for future progress and societal change. Take care and welcome to the class.